Another trucker. Oh crap. No. Ah, so annoying, dude. Wait, hold on. Wait, log out, log out, log out. Oh, are you serious? Oh, I forgot I'm in the high risk, bro. So it's bro. Damn it, dude. Uh, so annoying. Wait, I can just grab my shit. Chill, dude. Ah, god, so annoying. Wait, actually, I'll just drop this. Fine. Whatever. I'm not gonna lose anything anyways, it's fine. Whatever. Doesn't really matter. Ugh. Wait, blowpipe? Oh shit, my blowpipe! Ah, dang it dude. Before I continue with today's video, here's a quick word from our supportive sponsors. Do you need something to keep you busy while on the go or something to keep you productive when you're chilling? You've heard of this game before, but with so much content packed into this game, from massive PvP features to a variety of PvE encounters and hundreds of champions to play, Raid Shadow Legends is definitely the game to check out. In Raid, there are many different races and one of the prominent ones are the Elves. 700 years ago, Dark Lord Seraph tempted Elves away from the light through his unique philosophy and art, and as a result, the elves were split into high and dark elves, dark elves supporting him. War broke out between the two and bad blood still lingers between them. One of my favorite dark elf champion is Rural the Huntmaster because I'm a big fan of archer elves and this one looks badass. My favorite thing about raid is definitely the auto fighting system so you can level your fairest champions without having to pay much attention. Perfect for busy people like us. This is one of the best times to try out raid shadow legends because with my link in the description or by scanning the barcode on the screen, you can get a free epic champion, Tayro, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, and 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard, so you can summon awesome champions, which can be found in the inbox of your game. Join now and start your epic adventure in Raid. Let me give you guys a bit of a background as to what the heck happened, because for those of you guys that don't really play the game, you might not understand what just happened. What is that green glowing big skull on top of my head? So that skull you can only get in certain worlds called high risk worlds. They're not PvP worlds. They are a world in which if you were to go to the wilderness, you will lose everything if you die to a player there. Normally, if you die to a player on Skull in normal Wildy, you keep three items or four of your protect item. But in these worlds, if you die to a player, you lose everything. It doesn't matter what you have protect item or not. You will lose everything. So that is why my inventory got emptied when I died. And you might be asking, why am I using a high-risk world? What is the point? So, unfortunately for a lot of players like myself, high-risk worlds usually end up being the most reliable connection and stable ping worlds. Because when I do a lot of endgame PVM, I don't want to be interrupted by unstable ping, lag spikes, the like, and DCs and all that, right? I've been conditioned since the days where Old School Runescape was DDoS for weeks on end, to find the best world and yeah for me it ended up being a high risk world now normally when i do go to the wilderness i always check to see what world i'm in so i can hop out of it that has never happened until now and i think i know why it's probably due to the fact that i've been playing a lot of leagues and haven't been playing my main account much at all because in leagues wildy is super chill but yeah, there are people that will be camping those lovers in those high risk worlds. So if you're a PK and you want some action, you can go and fight these guys if you want. And as for normal players and PVMers like myself, just be careful when you go into the wilderness, all right? If you hop into a high risk world, remember to double check before going to the wilderness because you might lose more than you expect. On the immediate bright side though, I did manage to drop the clue before I die, which means I can go right back and pick it up and that's why I went to the wilderness in the first place, was to do those clues, so uh, at least I managed to get the clues done. And the rewards were pretty bad. But yeah, throughout this video, I'll be getting my blowpipe back and getting back into the grind that is next, the main grind. And once I get my blowpipe back, stacking up KC is going to be faster, because I can uh, poison the reavers while I kill the mages. It's time to do some Zora, so this method is really simple. I'm just going to T-bow the blue and the green phase and I'm just going to mage the melee phase because ranging the melee phase is a struggle so 
So this will help a lot. And we're going to do two kill trips because that'll break even on the teleports. I have so many extra teleports, so I'll never run out doing it this way. And it'll save me a lot of supplies as well. So yeah, let's get to it and try to get my blowpipe back. I wonder how many scales we're going to get. I am currently at 40k scales in my bank. I forgot to mention I will be using thralls to speed things up. Yep, it did the... Oh, I got... No! I got the magic thing. Oh, no! Yes, yeah, 20k scales, but... Oh, that is so troll. Oh, wait. Why would I do that? Oh, I wasted food. Oh, wait. There's a elite clue on the... Oh, there's... Oh, oh, I just teleported with the elite clue on the ground. Oh, I got my elite clue back. No way. I got it back. I literally got it back just now. 2k... Two kills later. Okay, so I'm going to put that in Watson. Uh, yeah, we are not on the right recording screen. God dang it. Well, I just got the surf helm now. Yeah, everything but the blowpipe, eh? All right, all right. Next drop, blowpipe. Gotta be it. I usually use blowpipe as well for the spec so I can heal up and save some food, but because I don't have that, the next best thing I got is my volatile staff. This thing is beautiful. It's like the AGS of the magic weapons. Basically 55% spec and I can hit the damage cap of 50 on the boss pretty frequently. I think the max is probably close to a 60 or something in uh, normal conditions. But yeah, there's a cap. But that means on average though, I do anywhere from 30 to 50 damage quite consistently with the spec. And I can land about one or two specs for a kill. So it does save a few seconds every kill. Oh, come on, that should finish it off. Oh, hell yeah, that was lit. I can see them making a good somewhere. <gasps> no fucking way, dude. Oh my god, what is today? I just got a dupe snakeling pet. No freaking no way. That's actually crazy. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, oh my god. This is crazy. What a day, man. Holy shit. Torvo helm into a dupe Zora pet. Alright, I've seen a, a dupe pet. I've seen a, a mage thing. I've seen a serp home. So the question is, what's next? 5,000 KC at the Zora. Yeah, yeah. That is a lot of kills. That is a lot of kills. I guess it'd be nice to get this bag of mutagen, though. <laughs> on, on the way to the getting the blowpipe bag, eh? Oh my god, I'm getting trolled to... <laughs> I've got an Onyx, a Mage Fang, a Serp Helm, and the pet. We are currently at 120,000 scales. Starting at like, what was that, uh, 40k? Mm -hmm. Or so? I'm just gonna have to charge up my Trident a bit though. There we go. This thing's uh, back to 16k. What? Alright, 75k wasn't enough. I keep forgetting this This thing fully charged requires um 125,000 fire runes. Let's put 1k for now. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, at one point in my editing period, I must have just enchanted a bunch of these. Uh, I'm not going to put all 4k just in case I, I make a mistake and I lose it or something. I shouldn't, but I'm not going to risk it. 40,000 uh, recoils. That's plenty. <laughs> plenty for Zora. Oh, no! A magic thing! No! Are you serious? I can't believe I did 1500 Zoras on the hardcore group Ironman without dying once. <laughs> I guess I just know how to shift my priorities based on the account. When you kill this boss so many times, you just kind of know how to just flick the snakelings in between mage phase. Yep, that's just how deep we've gone. Just too deep. Too deep in this goddamn hellhole. Somebody get me out of here. Frick, and I didn't get the blowpipe at 5500. Oh my god. <laughs> Hey, yo, 800 kills deep, bro. Come on, man. Oh, I got the bull pipe. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, I got the full pipe. I got it back. <laughs> oh my god, I got it back. Oh, I got it back. Holy crap, over 900 kills. Oh my god, don't dismantle it, please. Oh, I finally got it back. Oh, I can use it to get KC and do clue scrolls again with it and not lose it this time. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I think I started with like, what, 40, 50k scale. So, um, uh, this is 40k. This is 60k. So, true. 
200k i basically yeah i have to do 300k total pretty much all right so 800 kills i'm missing again like 100 150 or something got actually quite a quite a good amount of uniques and i i should be getting like one unique every 128 so yeah it should say two magic fangs but like i said didn't keep track of the first 100 so uh i guess on uniques i'm i'm actually behind i should have gotten more it's just insane. I kill these uh, bosses like in, in a minute 30 on average or something. So yeah, it's so fast. It piles up. Uh, magic seeds though, quite a lot. Oh, scales. There it is. This is the... Uh, yeah, it should be about 200k if you include the uh, the ones I missed. And lots of scales for the entire year. I'm ready for race 3. I'm ready to spam my blowpipe. <laughs> so yeah. Alright, here it is. Ah, the blowpipe's back. Man, it feels so weird not having the blowpipe. On this account, right? Because I've been using it for years. Yes, there it is. It's back. All right, we can finally do this uh, KC method that I really wanted to do. So I can uh, put on the prey mage as usual. So blowpipe with the serpent guarantees poison or venom rather if I land a hit. So yeah, that's all I do. I just tag a bunch of these guys. I just tag a bunch. And then I'm gonna kill the uh, the normal mages while I AC up, and yeah, this should be a lot faster. So with the blowpipe and a serp helm, if I inflict a blowpipe hit on the target, it'll venom them guaranteed, and it starts off at six. And every eighteen seconds, it'll hit two more damage on top. So it's six, eight, all the way up to twenty. It takes about two minutes to get to twenty, and that's perfect because in two minutes I kill about six to eight reavers for very little time spent which is an extra 20 kc or so per two minutes it's really really good it'll save me probably hours and hours in the long run so because the torf form gives me plus two strength over the face guard i actually don't need to bring my tacits because wearing tacits doesn't give me any max hits because i'm going to be divine potted for half of the the trips so i'll always maintain that max hit that's one less switches, which is really nice because switching between uh, range and melee gets a little annoying when there's a little too many switches, you know? You might lose some hits because you misclick or something. So less error. Uh, yeah, really powerful. Wait, why am I having my uh, mace? I just geared up for today, but yeah, minus this. But for the most part, it's really strong. It's very adaptable as well. Uh, I don't have to use all brews. I can bring like four or five hard food. And I might bring an extra brew depending on the team size. Uh, usually I only bring like 7 for 4s and 6 for like 5s. So yeah, and then I, I just bring some more hard food. So it's really nice and adaptable as well. And claws for early DPS. And if I get a lot of food drops for the second kill of the trip. And Ancient God Sword is just for flexibility. If I'm strong food, I got to clutch a kill for the he with healing. It's good for that as well. Really good on the um, minions, like the majors and blood reavers, and sometimes even the boss if I really need to. I usually try to do at least two kill trips with at least four people, so that way I get enough KC back and I don't have to re KC too much outside for future trips. Whew, that heal though came in clutch. Fucking hell, dude, that was clutch. <gasps> no way, I, I gotta do. No way, I. <laughs> No way, we got a doom. <laughs> uh, money for the boys. Money for the boys. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, do the worst drops, man. Okay. All right. No. It, it's it's okay because it's money for the boys, but oh shit, we got a dupe, eh? <laughs> we actually got a dupe. Oh my god. Okay, all right, all right, all right. We're getting drops, you know, we're getting drops. So I'm definitely getting more drops than the average so far, but it's the rarest drop that I already have, and Torva is much more common, so yeah. Kind of missed out on that, but it's okay. Grats on 1,000? Oh yeah, we hit 1,000. True. Hey, we got 1,000 KC. Although 600 was like masses though. But yeah, we did it. So Ice Prison has the ability to hit up to an 80 
if you do not have protect from range on but the problem is you are mostly camping mage so it's really tricky sometimes to want to be off mage because then you end up taking more damage but if you don't have someone save you on time from the prison it will hit you for upwards than 80 so i just saved my ass by flicking on range just in time because nobody's saving but my other teammate though almost got one shot oh oh my god good thing i have my prayer on holy shit i almost died Shadow phase is super dangerous because as you can see, if you stay under her for too long during her darkness, she will basically kill you. Unless you're really high HP and you're eating up already and trying to run away on time. But there are ways to deal with that as a team. Best way that we found is definitely hugging the north wall in the middle uh, section of it and making sure the boss is in the middle. What that does is eventually she'll run towards you guys. And when she gets really, really close, you guys all just go under the boss you see that tile that I marked? That's the ideal tile. And it'll force her to dance long enough that she'll bounce right back to the middle. Watch this! I summon reverse. The fifth and final phase is the most brutal phase of all because this is where your food will go down the drain really, really quick because her onslaught is brutal. Even if you have the right prayer on, she will deck you out with damage that will go through the prayer. And... Yeah, it's very brute intensive, so to get around that, people have been using the follow stall method. And the method is, as the name suggests, you follow someone, and by doing so, you can stall the boss if you set it up right. So essentially, as long as someone's last steps were under the boss, then if you follow that person, you will also go under the boss. And you can stall her for about, like, I don't know, two to three seconds... It's a feeling thing. That's like the maximum you can stall. And that allows the team to do damage without taking damage. And every time it goes for somebody else, the other person that's being attacked will also do the false stall. So this method is highly recommended, even though I'm not a fan because it's kind of like a glitch thing rather than like a skill thing. I would much rather be able to block most of the damage through a mechanical base feature that the boss has. Like, you know how Nightmare, it will do some sort of animation. And if you react on time, you can basically take a lot less damage but this boss even if you react on time you still take a crazy amount of damage so yeah it could be a bit better but it is what it is right now so i highly recommend using the stall method it'll save you a lot of bruise oh my god i got frozen <gasps> no way oh my god frozen both of them got stuck and i was the only one that could save them but i got frozen before i could reach them oh I like using the CGS on uh, three of the minions because they're weak to melee stats, so it's pretty nice for healing. Yes! Oh wait, eh. Not gonna heal that much back. I'm already 90 HP. Wait, didn't even heal. Dude, sometimes it's kind of glitchy, man. Because it didn't even heal me there, even though I landed a spec. Where is the Bloodville? What? Sometimes due to where the boss is when it tries to summon the Bloodvilles, if it's like in a really tight spot, it actually can't spawn any Bloodvilles. But it's pretty rare though that it's actually happened. First time ever. What? No, you already got that, right? Wait, wait, wait. Did you get it? Is that new? Oh my god. Van braces. Holy shit. Oh, it's new. It's new. Okay, cool, cool. Yo, grats. Okay, 1,000 super combats made for the good old next Sereno. We are stocked, but I uh, gotta build up some restores, I guess. And range pots, too. Damn. Yeah, I need, I need those, too. Dude, freaking next use everything. So many of everything is insane. All right, guys. So I want to talk to you all about some next logistics, because that's really important for this grind, since I do use a lot of potions and I do have to farm the herbs to make the potions for the most part. I used to get a ton of the herbs when I was grinding a lot of chambers and stuff, but I don't really do that much right now since I have the drops. So, so yeah, uh, now I have seeds, thankfully. Uh, Snapdragons, I got 419. So, assuming 10 each herbs wise from the seeds, that's like 4,000. Thankfully, that's a lot right here. And total flags have 273. So that's uh, 3,000, I guess, total flags, herbs. 
And I guess I can also show you the uh, extra herbs I have for like super combats and whatnot. So, but like not to worry about those. Those are a lot less needed because mostly brews and restores I, I will be using a lot more than the rest. You know, it's bad when there's so many patches and I, I just actually cannot keep track of them without actually having to look at my rune light freaking herb patch plugin. There's freaking nine herb patches, man. I kind of want at this point for them to just put all the herb patches next to each other so I can just like put them, you know, just farm them all at once, you know? Look, look at this. Oh my god, I can't keep track. I, I literally was just here. God damn it. Uh, I just came back to the same patch. Look at this, Jax. Put them all together. Three by three grid. Thanks. All right, open this up, please. What is this? 25 wines of Zami, man. Come on, man. Let's go. Third one, third time's a charm. Please be something good. Come on. Ah, dang. First three masters since getting my bullpen back, and uh, they're all just atrocious. Yo, uh, I haven't done mold in a while, but yeah, I had a bunch of those uh, mold parts that I hadn't used, so I'm just using it all up now uh, to make my next batch of brews. So, uh, yeah. The annoying part, obviously, is going to be breaking down all these freaking first nets, you know, extracting all these, but, uh, yeah, that should give me enough for this. Uh, but, yeah, we should probably just send some mole at some point. Yeah, send mole and just get it done. Because I do need to stock up. Once this is done, uh, I'm going to need another batch for the good old X. Are you guys ready for this? That's right, baby. I'm praying thralls. I could uh, spawn an extra spider, but I think the thralls would be worth it just because, I mean, it's going to constantly do damage to all these spiders. And uh, it could save me a hit from having to hit the spider sometimes because sometimes it has like one or two HP. So, wow. I'm a genius. Honestly, I don't think it's going to do too much for me, but it, it is pretty fun, though. It is pretty fun. I only have to summon one of these for a trip, so. Hey, yo, before I end today's video, I want to do something really special for our homie that I've known for quite a long time since, like, the Dungeoneering days. His name is Mr. Iron Pooh, or uh, I used to know him as Pooh Stings 1. But this man, he went really dry on the Warhammer. He just got it recently, but background, he went dry, like, four years ago. I think he stopped at, like, 20,000 uh, shamans for the Warhammer, and he's basically been playing the game very sporadically because of that one grind and he finally came back to go hard and he finally got it at 26,000 KC and you know what he said screw shamans I'm gonna AFK and get a drink and he AFK like an extra 50 more and he got another warhammer so yeah he ended up getting two warhammers uh, 26k shamans later so a uh, big you know big grats to my man for finally breaking this curse of a dry streak but yeah, this goes to y'all out there who are dry, you know, just keep at it. You'll eventually get what you're looking for. And you can say, fuck you to the dry streak afterwards. But yeah, shout out to Mr. Ampoo, my boy Scott. Anyways, catch y'all later.